The Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Janice Porter. How are you doing, Janice? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you, John. And you just woke me up if I wasn't. My goodness. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. And, and remind me again which part of the world you're in. I'm just north of you. I'm up in Vancouver. That's right, Janice up in Vancouver, absolutely. And Janice has uh, the innate, innate curiosity, which she's leveraged into building business relationships and teaches others how to do the same. Her passion is working with people who want to build their businesses through relationship marketing and networking. LinkedIn training is a huge part of what you do. And uh, and um, and you believe business pre uh, need to business professional need to have a magnetic LinkedIn profile, and this is the great platform. But what we want to talk about today is, I mean, LinkedIn is a, LinkedIn is a great platform. A lot of people have a lot of success on it, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of the standard, if you like. Mm -hmm. But also, in some ways, these these uh, kind of platforms almost become a victim of their own success at some stage, <laughs> right? And you know, because I mean, there's especially i mean we had certain times when there was a big acceleration in linkedin usage right the first one was i think um uh, the financial crisis actually was one of the ones where they saw a massive spike uh, of people then covid just sent it over the edge i think completely but some people i talked to are now kind of saying like i don't i don't know what to do with linkedin there's so many different parts of it now they keep introducing new parts i'm getting spammed non-stop by people it's like i'm people are confused as how to how to optimally use it because so many things seem to be changing so fast well you know i think i don't think it's any different than any other social media platform so yeah. i i think there's always new things there's always things to take away and then we have to adjust and and so forth if we are going to stay on the platform personally i believe that it's it's not the platform it's you know, why are we on there? What is our purpose for being on there, really? Because there's noise we have to get rid of wherever we are. Mm -hmm. But I believe, in my experience, that a lot of people hang out on the newsfeed, and that's it. And mm -hmm. so it's it's the the more and more and more people uh, that are posting on LinkedIn and getting less and less exposure because there's right, and yet it's still a very small percentage of LinkedIn members that are actually using the newsfeed effectively, yeah. right? And there, there's a lot of people complaining about the algorithms that don't work and you know we never get seen by people and so on. I don't spend as much time there as a lot of people. I like to get into the mailbox. I like to mm -hmm. talk to people and build relationships. So I have found that LinkedIn is a very good place to do that because I can focus on the kind of people that I want to talk to. And then I can start to, to reach out and build those relationships. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about building those relationships? Like what, what is the process that you, uh, that you take? Uh, because as we've seen, there's a lot of people take the spray and pray approach or the, uh, yeah. Or yeah. the I'm going to fool you into thinking that I really um, want to connect with you personally with this lovely little connection message, but the minute <laughs> you connect with me, I send you the automated sales pitch that everybody gets. Right. So how do, how do you? Uh, yeah, how do you use it? Uh, how do you use it? Well, I mean, uh, as as you already know from our conversations, I'm all about being curious, and so. Yeah. I always like to make it about them because if I do find, I'll do a search, a refined or strategic search to find people that say in a certain industry or in a certain area or with certain um, uh, you know, characteristics that I'm looking for that I can uh, filter through. And then I start looking at their profiles. I never just connect, connect, connect. I look at pictures, I look at first impressions. You know, What do I see when I go to their profile? Are they active on LinkedIn? And then if I'm, what I'm really looking for are the things that a lot of people don't put on their, their profiles, which are the, the things that I can um, uh, build rapport through. So, for example, you know, if I see that somebody um, is a basketball of aficionado or they follow, you know, the, the, the NCAA teams and I notice they went to a, a school that is really um 
uh, high up in those rankings every year with the NCAA or whatever in basketball. That's something I'm, I'm curious about and I love to talk to people about. So I might start there. So I'm looking for people that are also interested in finding conversation and, and you know, sure, I want them to be, for me and my business, if I see their profile isn't so great, I know they're a good prospect, let's face it. Yeah. But I'm not going to start there, right? I'm going to start gotcha. by, by seeing, you know, who they are. Um, are they a real person that cares about other people? Are they open to a conversation? Because at the minute that I um, connect and have a few, maybe one or two messages back and forth, I want to and there's still interest both ways, I want to take it offline. I want to take it off LinkedIn. Right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And so what you were mentioning there is really looking for those very particular items like reading between the lines or seeing, yes, you yes. know, here, here are little connection points as opposed to, again, what a lot of people do is go, oh, they look at your title and then they go, oh, as as a fellow marketing or as somebody else who's in this, you know, instead of, as you said, I mean, again, you're just at a very superficial level and you could be saying that to a thousand people, and but the yeah. idea, but the idea of what you're saying is really trying to spend a little time to find those little connectors. I like to say, slow down your outreach and, um, and speed up your outcome. So I got that from a friend of mine and she says it all the time, slow down your outreach and, and um, speed up your out your your outcome because mm -hmm. it's about people. It's about knowing, getting interested in the person themselves. Because it's true. Like I get those emails or those messages that say, um, "I see you're really good at building relationships, and you're a coach." I'm not a coach, by the way, but mm -hmm. that's what they always say. And I think I have a program that you might be interested in. How do you know? You don't even know me, yeah. right? Yeah, so I agree. I just I just ignore all those things. Mm -hmm. So what are what are some other ways that uh, people can leverage LinkedIn? Um, as you said, I mean, there are new there there are new little things coming out all the time. Is there anything significant that's come out lately that you think is underused? Well, I think there's it, this didn't come out just lately, but um, maybe two or three years ago, and it's mm -hmm. completely underutilized. And that is um, audio messaging and video messaging. Mm right so now you can't do them from your desktop you can only actually activate it from your cell or from your mobile phone but then it does show up on all of the platforms once you initiate it so if you send somebody a video message for example it stands out from the other messages in your message box mm. um, it also it's 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 like I hate text messaging because there's no emotion in it. Uh, Same thing. So if you audio or video message, you can see the emotion. You can see the start, the sparkle in someone's eye. You yep. can hear that voice. So to me, those are very underutilized. Wow. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a great one. Great piece of advice for everybody. Go check out uh, LinkedIn. Make sure you have the app on your phone yes. and start standing out. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, I think that's a, a fantastic one. Very organic, very authentic, very mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. I, I had a, I did that. I video messaged um, a past client of mine a few months ago, and uh, he he immediately responded and said, "How did you do that?" And then figured it out and sent me a message back. Right, because he could see the value right away. He's a mortgage broker, mm -hmm. and yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah. But I guess the same piece of advice goes like, don't don't go, oh, now I have a video pitch machine here. No, no, no. Oh, gosh, no, no. I wouldn't even think of that. But see, there you go. No, yeah. I'm saying, but somebody, I guarantee you, somebody go, oh, I'm great now, you know. So, no, use it ele elegantly. And I think that's the thing, isn't it, Janice? I think our, our, our antennas are up so much and whatever, is that if you are elegant in your approach, if you are thoughtful, if you're intentional, you are going to stand out because you're going to uh, stand out in comparison to all these other one people who are doing the opposite, right? Who are doing it in right. inelegantly. And I think there's another... Um, piece that 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 I find useful and mm -hmm. starts conversations very quickly is once I, um, okay so you reach out to connect with somebody that you've chosen in your list of this week mm -hmm. you're going to choose these people and the connection request itself is very brief um, it's basically you know it can, it can be very little it could be I came across your profile it could be mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming to your state I would love to have a chance to meet you 
And then you say, would you be open to connecting? So you ask the question, you don't assume. So that's all that you do in the first one. If they respond, then, and usually when people do respond by connecting, they mm -hmm. don't say anything. They, right. That's it, right? So you get the notification that they have accepted your connection request. Now it's time to actually start a conversation. And one of the things I love to do in that first conversation is obviously say thank you. Thank you for accepting my connection request. Mm -hmm. And then say something completely unexpected, like um, just curious, what can you tell me about yourself that I won't find on your LinkedIn profile? And then I say, here's something about me. Mm -hmm. And I tell them a, a, a fun fact about me. And then those that bite love it. It's great. So right. we then start on a human level, right? So, yeah. And that's worked for me many times. Yeah. And, and again, like you said, I mean, what's what's great about that is that's so inherently human because clearly if it's not on their bio or whatever, it has to be something that they have to engage with and it and it underlines what you always talk about is the curiosity piece right yeah can i give you an example of one that went for okay so i i had found this woman's um um profile and she was in california and uh she looked like she had a really interesting uh successful in uh, business and uh, um I thought she might be an interesting guest on my podcast. And that's all I was thinking about. So anyway, I did that thing. And I said what my interesting fact was. And she came back and she said, I used to be a race car driver. Wow. And that was the most last thing I would have thought of for this person who was a, a designer, an interior designer and a stager and had this huge business. So we had a conversation. Then I pulled it offline and went on to a Zoom call. She did come on my podcast and she was delightful and interesting woman. And it came from that human touch to begin with. But then over a year and a half later, I hadn't talked to her, but I knew she was working on this big project right. that was um, quite interesting. And so I I sent her a message on email, or oh, sorry, on LinkedIn and asked her how that project was going back and forth a little bit. Turned out she was ready to do some LinkedIn training. And then she came and asked me if I would help her. So you just never know. But the thing is, it started in such a nice place that we felt like there was a friendship. That yeah, happened. yeah. And that's what I like. That's what I like. I mean, and and like you said, especially if you do it authentically. But uh, but that's the other part too, isn't it? it you, you know, people talk about wanting real connections and authenticity and all of that. You can and you can only <laughs> you can only be that if you actually be that, right? Exactly. You, can, you have to. You have to be authentic. You have to be real, and because you can tell the difference. And so it's not about like oh can I be authentic? You know, do I, it's like, you ask yourself, can I really be myself? And if I can't really be myself, then maybe there's a, that's a completely different conversation. Yeah, totally. I, I do think that it's, in, don't get me wrong though. I do think it's important on LinkedIn that if you want to um, use the platform to grow your business, for example, that you do need to be visible. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying don't post things or, yeah. and so on. But I think that if you're not a prolific um uh, contributor of content, you also can gain traction by commenting um, smartly, elegantly, and all of those words you use on other people's posts, yeah. right? And so that's a big thing from that perspective that that can build some traction. Oh yeah, and, and I would agree with that. I think that is one of the one of the most important things because yes, everybody, lots of people are producing content. Unfortunately, now with AI, there's way more people producing content yeah. who weren't able to before. So, the standard of content has is starting to go down. Unfortunately, as you as it always happens when you get volume tools that come out. Yeah. However, having said that, uh, like you said, is there's nothing there's no better way of making a connection with somebody than actually taking as you said curiosity which is janice's keyword and i want to keep coming i'm going to keep coming back to it because i think it's so incredibly important if you're genuinely curious and interested in what the person wrote and you want to make a comment to feedback either to add to it or to uh, or to focus on one element or to ask a question on it that is hugely validating to the person who wrote that Absolutely. as we've discussed before like on your podcast uh 
do not, and I repeat, do not comment great post. Yeah. <laughs> or great blog post or oh, any God. variation of the great generic, you know, compliment, because that immediately communicates that you've never read it. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if I, I might just want to share with your audience, if, you're, if you'll if you um, allow me, there's a new feature on LinkedIn that is very questionable and causing some stir these days. And it's, of course, related to AI. And it is, in fact, a new setting in privacy and se settings and privacy. And it's under your data privacy. And it's where and they have automatically LinkedIn has automatically turned it on. Mm. And what it is, is it's, it's allowing any, it's allowing LinkedIn to use any content and, and information that's on your profile that you have to train their, a, their mm. AI bots mm. and yeah. their affiliates. Mm. So, um, yeah. Do you want that on or not? Right, right. And most people wouldn't be aware of that, right? No. So basically, you know, they're taking all of your details and working it into their into their large language models, I guess. And at the same time, they've just canceled um, their program, their community program, where you could um, participate in uh, like a community uh, article. Oh. Yes, which is interesting to me because they've been using us for all of this last few couple of years. Yeah, yeah, and keep tantalizing you with, oh, you know, you're you're in the top ten percent yeah. of pro yeah. of contributors to this. If you just contribute a little more, you can get to top three yeah. and have a what was it? Have a badge, badge for? Yeah. Badge. But it was only a badge for as top long as you contributor in this category or in that category yeah. or whatever. But the badge only lasted as long as you as you continue to do mm -hmm. it. So yeah, because I mean, I thought that was another that was another questionable one i have to say because you know i contributed to to one like in podcasting mm -hmm. or something and and sure after a while you just keep getting these messages oh yeah, yeah. you're in the top 11 now keep going <laughs> and then you start to go huh i'm 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 feeling a little bit like almost used well, now that's what, I, that's what i was feeling when yeah. i found out that they've canceled it and now they're using our information so i turned mm -hmm. mine off for now but it is right. something to think about yeah, yeah, um, um, absolutely, um, and and just um, just one other thing, um, you know, um, having a proper persona obviously on LinkedIn is very important. And as we talked about authenticity and that earlier, I mean, sometimes I still feel like sometimes people are, are creating personas that are not really reflective of themselves, or they're getting bad advice or something. What, what's your advice to some somebody on their on their persona? on their profile. Yeah. Um, I think, first of all, it's important to fully fill out as much as possible your profile. You can only have one, so make sure you don't have more than one. That's the first <laughs> thing. And then uh, as a personal profile. And I say, um, you know, be honest, be authentic. You can tell when it's, you know, someone's got an AI photo now, that's the next <laughs> thing, right? And then when somebody has, um, um, I mean, yes, you can get help, but, you need to have what I call the four H's. First impressions count. The four H's are the header, which is the background image. Make sure that it's something that relates to you. It doesn't have to be, um, it depends. If you work for yourself or you've got a book out that you want to show the book there. But I don't need to see 14 pictures of you because there's one headshot. So that's the second H, headshot. The third H is the headline which is the most important real estate on LinkedIn because it goes with you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So make it work for you, keywords and a positioning statement. And the fourth H is what I call the hook. The hook is the beginning of your about section. And I've come across a lot of people who don't even have an about section. Mm -hmm. That's the piece that really is, if again, if you're a business owner, speaks to your audience who you help, how you serve them, what pain points you solve. So that's important to have that. But the hook is the first four lines because that's all you see on a desktop, even mm -hmm. less on a mobile, before the see more button. So yeah, no, great, great, no, that's a great piece of advice. And the other thing too, I can't think is, like all things in life, you know, we do things like this and then we tend to think, okay, that's done. I'll leave that for a while. <laughs> but it's something that you should be revisiting on a regular basis to make sure that it's still relevant and that it's refreshed and up to date. 
And, you know, especially when, if I come to someone's profile and I look at the top, I look at the first impression, I go down to see if they're active on LinkedIn, if they have an activity section, if they have an about section, mm -hmm. if their profile is complete. But what's the killer for me is when I go down there at the bottom and they have two or three recommendations, but they're from 20, 2012 or 2009, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, no, I agree. I agree. It's um, and I think it, I think a lot of people just got out of the habit of those recommendations now. They're kind well, of. Well, I don't mean endorsements. Yeah, no, no, no. I know the recommendations. I'm thinking people have got out yeah. of the habit of lo of looking and giving them and whatever because it's a be, It just seems it does seem to be something that a lot of people have abandoned. I know, but it seems like buzzkill when I get there because they're not completed their profile to my mind oh yeah 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 you'd say you sound really exciting but nobody else seems to think so yeah. <laughs> one of the things that keeps it current right it just shows you're still working exactly i just wanted to give a shout out to janice uh you know just show what a pro she is so i was on janice's uh podcast recently and i got this lovely look at this oh. lovely thank you car but look at this look at what's really cool about this sorry <laughs> It had a it had a screenshot from the actual podcast and a lovely note. Such that's such a fantastic thank you. I mean, I rarely, you know, I get these things the odd time or whatever, but this really stood out for me oh, with its you. with its uh, you know special personalization, kind of underlining everything you've been talking about on this uh, on this podcast about how to present yourself on LinkedIn, underlined by what you do yourself, even offline. Thank you, John. That's very kind. Appreciate yeah. it. So all of Janice's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Oh, well, basically, I am a relationship marketing specialist. I teach people how to strategize and use LinkedIn to um, build relationships. And, and it all starts with the profile, as we talked about. So that has to be in place. And then I teach people how to use it to um, gain some traction there. And I show them how to nurture those relationships with those cards and gifts that um, I am also um, enjoy sending. So yeah. that was kind of fun. I love the idea that uh, I just took a quick screenshot so it's not the best picture, but it reminds you who I am because you send, yeah. you talk to a lot of people, yeah. right? So it, it gives you that extra little piece of connection that we that we started and had. And it started from nothing, right? It started yeah. from um, uh, a request for you to be on my podcast so yeah, i really yeah. appreciate that and that i got to be on yours as well exactly exactly the power well oh there you go the power of relationships but uh yeah thanks again no that really stood out and i just wanted to i wanted to uh acknowledge it because i think it's a good lesson to people and, and it underlines your message but it's a good lesson to people is is today today like those little things make a big difference because we're in such a kind of per impersonal kind of hands-off world that with those things and it's and let's face especially for people like us it kind of takes us back to simpler yeah, that's, times that's true that's true it does but the thing about it that's so important today just to reiterate what you said is that when you and you can tell me if you felt this or not but when you open a greeting card it comes in the mail and by the way i did it online but it was all done right for me right so um when you open that, there's something about that tangible and it takes you from your head to your heart. Yep. A text message doesn't do that. No, An no. email no. message doesn't do that. Nope. So it just is that extra thing that, you know, I love being able to do. But um, uh, what was I going to say? There's, I don't know, you can just have fun with it too. But anyway. Yeah. No, it's a great idea. All right. Well, listen, as I said, all of Janice's information will be below this video. Uh, thanks again, Janice. Thank you for watching, listening. See you all again very soon.